One issue, two points of view. Agora. Two years ago, Rajendra Kumar Pachori received the Nobel Peace Prize alongside Al Gore for his work at the head of the International Group of Experts on Climate Change. The European Commissioner in charge of Development and Humanitarian Aid, Carol de Gert, received him in Stockholm as part of the European Development Days initiative. The two exchanged views in the context of the upcoming International Conference on Climate Change, planned in December in Copenhagen. What global response to climate change and development is the theme of this week's Agora? We are 50 days away from the Copenhagen conference. Um, when you look at conferences, problems are never solved 50 days before the conference. Huh? So I think it's important that we uh, are um, not only optimistic about it, but that we are making efforts to come uh, to um, a result in Copenhagen. Uh, Europe is, uh, uh, we are really set for doing that. And what uh, we, sh we should do in, in, in the coming weeks is first of all, agree amongst ourselves in the European Union on the burden sharing for uh, uh, the financing uh, of the uh, developing uh, world. And secondly, uh, press the other participants to come to a real negotiation because the longer we wait, the more complicated the problem will be. Well, I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, I think uh, there are changes that are taking place which are not always hitting the headlines. But even the US, um, Senator John Kerry was with us at an event that we organized on the 1st of October. Uh, he's very confident that something will happen with the passage of the bill that he's introduced in the Senate. And in the last few days, there have been some very interesting changes. But I think the U.S. role is absolutely critical to the success of Copenhagen. And uh, this is where Europe can also play an extremely important role diplomatically. Um, so also Japan. Uh, because I believe that unless you can get the U.S., on the table, uh, I'm afraid the chances of success would be diminished. What is the responsibility of the developed world vis-à-vis uh, -vis the developing world and, and especially uh, the least developed and, and vulnerable countries with respect to, um, for example, industrial policy? Because uh, there could be a tendency that we and that the industry um, are developing uh, activities who are uh, detrimental to climate change, especially in those countries. That's one example. Another example is deforestation. Companies, yes, from developed countries are uh, active in, 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 this, uh, in this sector. So uh, I think Europe and also the United States will have uh, to focus on the extraterritorial impact of their legislation. I mean, what I mean is they will have to regulate their own companies' activities in those countries. I believe it's also important to see that uh, Africa, which is providing a substantial amount of minerals, a uh, substantial amount now of even hydrocarbon resources, um, gets adequate returns and is able to make the best use of those returns. And I must say that the record has not been all that great because you look at the case of Nigeria which has been an oil exporter for a long time I'm not too sure whether the wealth that this that they've generated as a result has been used effectively so I think we need to create capacity in these countries climate change adaptation and mitigation go hand in hand with sustainable economic growth in Africa because if there's no economic growth in Africa then it will uh, uh, be a continuous flow of donations and this is not a good basis to, to resolve a problem that is going to stay with us in any case for decades if not uh, uh, hundreds of years. We, we need a, a sound basis for that. Could I raise another issue and that's the whole issue of lifestyle changes. Now this is something which makes people uncomfortable because they feel that lifestyle changes implies giving up all the good things that development has provided us so far. But it seems to me that if everybody in the world is going to emulate and follow the same uh, styles of living that you have in the developed world, 
we have it's not a, sustainable we, it's not sustainable and mahatma gandhi was very right when he was asked whether um he didn't want india to reach the same level of prosperity as britain and his response was it took britain half the resources of the planet to reach its level of prosperity how many planets will india require so you know we 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 have to set examples whereby the rest of the world also feels that there is a change taking place in the developed countries uh, let, let me give you a very interesting example we have mm -hmm. these uh, uh, peacekeeping forces in darfur right uh, and what you see is that uh, the, the water table went down by 8 meters in a couple of years right. why because europeans mm. americans mm. Uh, are using much more water now I this see. is a very fundamental problem because if everybody on this planet is going to use as much water as we do yes as the europeans do or yes. the americans do yes then it will not it can never be sustainable the same goes for example with with air conditioning no yes mm. you're freezing in the united states Absolutely. and they some in europe think that they have to imitate this and then you also start freezing in certain parts of europe which is also in it, asia it started happening in asia yeah. on a large scale because it's not a, a, a matter of continents it's a matter of prosperity yes. i mean the the indians who are as prosperous as the europeans and they exist yes and they are spending uh, they, they they have the same impact on on, on climate in as fact, we have in fact worse they are much worse in some respects because uh, they just don't feel the social yeah. restraints that you have social pressure also yes so you know they they really go berserk in terms of their consumption patterns and i think we really need to bring about some change in thinking in that direction also worldwide mm -hmm. and this of course has to happen in the us i think it's very important important to have that kind of 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 measures to uh um, mobilize people and and without mobilize mm. mobilizing the population you can never get to a solution that's true psychologically i think it's very important and i think in that respect europe again has been ahead of everyone else the extent of public transport you have over here and in the united states that's completely missing uh i think by creating infrastructure you're also bringing public about public investment in general huh? exactly you're bringing about lifestyle changes which otherwise would not be possible otherwise you go to a city like houston everybody uses a car because there's nothing else you can do and big cars yeah big huge cars but they can't yeah. sell them anymore that's quite the right. problem <laughs> okay quite right <laughs>